going to give you any respect. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> it's a call centre. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Good morning, everybody. I'm a little bit surprised. Bob Haywood is a consultant to the BPO industry, and he says he completely understands why Australian call centres are heading offshore. That's really not seen as being a highly desirable job category in Australia. I mean, it's populated by a lot of people who have maybe not a lot of technical qualifications, may not have even finished all of their schooling. Certainly very few graduates work in call centres. A lot of backpackers work in call centres, seen as a way of earning money. Yeah, so can't be a lot of job satisfaction because people don't stay in the job very long. That's all right, mate. How's your day been so far? You had a good day? Let me, what can I do for you? How do I get you on board? How do I get your business? If you're looking at the respectability of scale of jobs, I think call centre definitely comes above working as a waitress or, or a bar. I've done a bartending and that was fun and flexible, but you can't support yourself hardly on bartending or waitressing, whereas call centre you can get a full-time decent, you know, wage kind of thing. Look, I might end up staying working in call centre to call centre until retirement age, but I wouldn't think of it as a career. No. <laughs> you know, I'd just chop from one to another. <laughs> it's a far cry from data processing operator Santosh Kohli, who sees working in a BPO as the biggest career opportunity of her life. Unlike most Jekis employees, she's not from the middle class and she's struggling to learn English. Santosh was lucky. A community organization recommended her for a clerical position. Unlike Santosh, Minal Varma speaks fluent English and has a university degree. She leads a team that handles calls from Australian customers about insurance policies on their credit cards. The customer is 70 years old. The wife is how old? I don't know. Quickly, quickly. So I apologise and say, sir, I'm sorry, I, had, I misinformed you. I apologise. I go home and I tell my mom I, I lead a team of 30 people. And everyone's like, OK, because I'm the youngest in my family. So leading a team is something which is unheard of. Let's try and quickly get one syllable word each. The uh, first thing new employers learn is to neutralise their Indian accents. Uh, insurance. insurance or insurance. So you've got the finer points of Australian English are learned on the job. OK, right. They say might very often, yeah? Mm -hmm. OK, might. See you soon. Talk to you later. <laughs> Australians are very laid back. Um, so what we tell our people is to enjoy talking to them and do not rush them, because I don't think they'll take that too kindly. OK, no worries. No worries. Anything else? No worries. <laughs> In this Australian team, you'd have a lot of them pick up and say, at the end of the sentence, say, no worries. It's not Indian. If I tell that to an Indian, he'd probably not realise what, you know, what I've said. But uh, because it's my lingo and they, they talk, uh, you know, they're talking to Australian customers day in and day out for eight hours a day. So it's very uh, normal to pick up these things. The buzzword in this organisation is performance. Everything moves basis performance. Harder to grasp are the rules of foreign business and personal finance. Even the idea of buying with credit is unfamiliar here. Ma'am, you know, you may... Just a moment, ma'am. Give me time to speak, OK? Last time you made a payment of $150 in the month of June and that payment had been returned by the bank. I don't believe in the credit. I'd rather use a debit card. That is the Indian mentality. Uh, you need to spend only as much as what you earn. Imagine not being able to pay for a car and someone takes it away. It's okay in the West. I, I, I didn't. I missed out on the payment and someone took away the car. But it's a loss of face in our society. So you'll get 20% discount on the shoes. So do you still want to cancel your car? Customer service is another alien concept that has to be learned on the job. 
in india now we have come up with this concept of customer services it didn't exist earlier okay you didn't never had uh, people taking your calls and saying do you like it or do you not like my product most people in india don't know what a mortgage is most people honestly at that time wouldn't have known what a credit card was don't know what an escrow is what in what a different kind of insurance policy is these two months only a few years ago these jobs would have been held by australians who know only too well about credit cards and mortgages now these indian workers are having a crash course in how to deal with the australian public i was so upset about this i know you can't do anything about it but it just seems very unfair well ma'am i okay i'll check it and the answer will be the same give me your card number kitne ziddi log hain ready hai there's a lot of stress on customer satisfaction and uh, you put yourself at the other end and think that if i was a customer would i really like it if i was you know given an attitude on the call i would not what would i pay 39 dollars if i don't want it Eighty-nine dollars actually has been charged, and it's a balance on your uh, account. It's not a balance at all. It says on the account it's an annual fee. Yeah, because the, because the card was existing for for that year, so it has been charged. Can you put me through to someone who knows what they're talking about? We've had instances when the customer would very categorically say, "I want to speak to an Australian." or if i have a agent who would put the customer on hold so the customer would get back and say yeah you foreigner so and that's probably a comment like that would make my agent say but why is he saying that you know we do this that's a job but um, it's okay no big deal now look I'm on a mobile at the moment. It's not for me to keep spending money to ring you. People. I understand. Well, Mr. Shaw, I'm in a hole for 20 minutes now. The fact is that I'm not willing to keep mucking around. I mean, four days. To... Copying flack from the public is part of the job for call centre workers everywhere. And what's the rego? Australians have been doing yep. it for years. Yep. And at least outside of the workplace, they're willing to talk about it. It's not the best experience I've ever had. I found it quite stressful at times, and. Um, It's hard to deal with. It's disheartening. You're doing the same thing for eight hours, and you're annoying people. So you're not exactly helping people by being a robot. You're pissing them off. <laughs> There's, you know, that thing where you have to always be nice and smiling and happy, and you're not always feeling nice and smiling and happy, and you can't always be expected to give a hundred percent when you've just copped flack of someone and they've called you every name under the sun, and you have to deal with that. The general public just knowing how cheap and bitchy and annoying and scabby and mm. nitpicky and they're such liars to get their own way mm. and then you give them an inch they take a mile mm. and, you know, every day you're dealing with people that are aggressive and rude and will swear profusely and you know it's well, it's rough leader, calling and and being very dirty as well so it's just yeah. like the mental the, <laughs> yeah. that was they call weekly and and just yeah that Jerk off and whatnot. So, <laughs> that that wasn't very nice as well. Start talking about shoe fetishes and things, and and um, yeah. I have tried, you know, using an Indian accent because you know you're working with people that have accents, so it's easy to take off their accent. And I found that when, on those times that I did use an Indian accent, people were really nice to me. And maybe it was because of the manner I was doing it, and I was having a great time with it. But I did it on those days when I'd had such a bad day, and I was just really down and out. It's like you know what, something's going to pick me up, and it'll be this. <laughs> While the pressures of dealing with the public are just as intense for Jekus employees, India's BPO industry is attracting workers with big aspirations. The average salary of a call center worker is $8,000 a year, putting them among India's best paid. Most of this calls are just not willing to respond to the customer. So that's not the way. Ekta Jaiswal comes from a background of privilege, graduating from India's most prestigious boarding school. It's fine whatever you do. She's now on a fast track to success and is highly ambitious. I mean, I'm definitely planning to move up the ladder at the top, which may be the topmost position, whatever it may be, at whatever organisation. The burgeoning BPO industry is not only bringing new ideas into the workplace; it's also generating change on the outside. Ekta is typical of a new generation of free-spending consumers 
fueling rapid economic growth across India. Shopping malls previously unknown in India are Gagal's temples to this new prosperity. And the cash registers are ringing over time. It's a financial independence which is very important. I have to, at the end of it, plan my finances every month. Pay my rent, pay my card installment, uh, manage the house and uh, at the same time enjoy. It's different when your you know, family is paying for everything. I don't think the satisfaction is so much. Okay, and maybe you can feel guilty so if you overspend. I can hear overspend and not feel guilty because I know I've earned it myself.